Marketing Your Private Practice is a podcast where you'll learn easy to implement tips and strategies to grow your business without spending all day online. I'm your host, Kathy Koliakovo, and I teach practitioners the Thrive Marketing Method to create simple and streamlined plans by focusing on long-term strategies, not just social media. Discover ways to spend less time on your marketing, attract more clients, and build the financial freedom that comes with a thriving practice. One where you have time left in your day for the people and things that matter to you. Hey, Private Practice Heroes, it's Kathy Koliakovo with the Marketing Your Private Practice podcast, and today I have a special guest with me, Linda McLean. She is an executive business coach extraordinaire, I call her. She's from McLeanInternational.com, and she's my own business coach and has been for the past eight years. Linda, I want to welcome you to the podcast. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Thanks, Kathy. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Now, to give you a little background on Linda and her official bio, she has more than 25 years in business leadership and team development. She is a business and life coach who is ready to help any business reach its next level. She's also an international bestselling author of numerous books. And in her coaching practice, Linda and her team focus on helping individuals and businesses of all size from startups to successful leaders and top sales producers. She helps them increase productivity, boost revenue growth, and live life at their highest potential. Now, one of her books is her Snapshot Business Planning book, which is my go-to resource for my annual business planning. And that's why I invited her on the podcast today to share with everyone some of her business planning expertise. Because I want you to turn your annual business planning from something that you dread, like I used to do, or don't even do at all, and turn it into something that is easy to do every year and know what to include in it and how to make it a useful tool for your business versus something you just talk about and never put into use. So Linda, I am so glad you're here to share this expertise. And I wanted to start off because I'm not sure you realized it, but This is our 10th anniversary this year of being friends and connections and when we met. I wanted to find out when we actually met so I could say the exact amount of years we've known each other. And it was actually September 16th in 2013. And that was the day you emailed me and we had a virtual introduction. And honestly, I have to tell you, that phone call took my life and my business and put it on a totally different trajectory than I ever thought would have been possible had we never, ever met. So I don't know if you realize that, but we got 10 years together. Oh my gosh, Kathy, I did not realize it has been that long. And from the time that someone referred me to you, it has been, it's just been a wonderful journey together. You know, I think that's the key thing is it's a journey together that we make. And as working yeah. together, we do become friends and you build the relationship that's even stronger. And it all starts with business sometimes. And I'm grateful for that. It does. And I was thinking about it. And it's really like all these different decisions that I made in the past that ended up leading you to me. Because I look back and I went to a conference that for my business when I started was life-changing. And that was in 2009. And I look back and all the connections I made there led to me being nominated as marketing director for the International Virtual Assistance Association. And you worked with one of my colleagues there, a former president as well, Mm -hmm. and Carla Wilson. And so she was somebody you did business with. Yeah. And when you were looking for this person to help with the Bob Proctor events and come on as a VA expert and join that team of experts that he had, you reached out to Carla, the VA you knew, and she sent you on to me and someone else. And that's when we had that first phone call. But it's so funny how the course of things will change just by all these small decisions or things that happen to you over time. I agree. And I think that, you know, the important thing is to recognize who is in your camp, who is influencing you, who do you go to for suggestions? Because when I approached Carla, she says, no, I'm not your gal. And I said, really? And she said, but I know somebody because I was very specific in what I was looking for. So this is what leaders have to do in their business. What are you looking for? 
And Carla said, you know what? It's not me, but I know Kathy Kaliakovo and her marketing expertise and everything she does is spot on. She's your gal. And you see, it is yeah. building the relationship and being able to trust people of who you're going to work together yeah. with. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. So anyhow, I just want to say happy 10th anniversary to you. Oh, I think <laughs> and we should me. celebrate. I think we should <laughs> find a way to celebrate. We should. Definitely. Maybe I need to bring Marco out to Arizona and we go golfing for a week or something. I think with that would be Scott. a fabulous, fabulous thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You heard it here. I might have to commit myself to a vacation next year. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to hold you accountable awesome. to that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Crap. Now it's on my business plan list and my goals. <laughs> As people will learn, the final thing in your business plan is identifying how are you going to celebrate the progress that you made in the past year? So for your listeners, hold Kathy accountable because she's making progress and her reward is going to be coming to Arizona to golf next year. Awesome. Excellent. Okay. So we are going to talk about business planning. And I know that it is something that a lot of people avoid, don't like to do, or think of it as words on a piece of paper that they should look at doing. And from my time working with you, Linda, I know how important they are. And the thing for me is you've made it really easy for me to figure out how to do my own business planning. But a lot of us really start off or think about it in a way that's just not as helpful. And I find, you know, not that I want to call it mistakes, so to speak, but I think there are kind of mistakes, and I'm putting that in air quotes, everybody. There are mistakes that people and business owners make when it comes to their annual business planning that I think can sometimes hold them back from growth. And I was just wondering what your thoughts are on like, what are, or what is that biggest mistake that people make? It's so true, Kathy. Individuals think that they can just hear a couple of ideas and just head forth into the next year without any real vision or planning. So if I if, if we can call it a mistake or really, I think it's not reaching the potential as a leader in your business, but also for your business, it is not taking the time to have vision. Like and and individuals get all kind of wonky with some of that, but it is important to honor the time for yourself as a leader, as a business owner, business practice owner, to have the vision. What do you really, really want in your business? And one of the things that I always say, one of my quotes is, you don't really know where you're going unless you pick a destination. Now, the destination is your goal in your business, but you honestly don't really know where you're going unless you pick that destination and then you start moving towards it. And so I think individuals need to be real to say, what is my vision for my business? Now, go out three years and five years. What do I really want to be doing? How, what rewards do I want, whether it's financial or time, whatever it is? What is your vision for your business? And individuals just don't take the time to focus on that vision and understand it and wrap their arms around it. So if it's a mistake, that's what I would probably consider. It. So therefore, it's a lack of vision, lack of planning. And do you think that that comes for a lot of people in thinking that it's really complicated, like that business planning is, I know for me, when I started in business, I was in a program with the government and I had to put together a business plan. And I know for years, that was the only business plan I really ever put together. And I never came back to it. I didn't look at it. And I looked at it as a huge chore, like a big, you know, a white elephant that I just wanted to avoid as much as possible. Do you think that's where a lot of people come with, you know, that don't put their business plan or look at doing any kind of business planning into place? You are spot on, Kathy. Listeners may not know my background was in commercial lending in the bank, wherein the business plan that the clients had to had to submit to the bank, to us bankers, for us to look at their line of credit or a short term loan was pretty in depth. And it did take them a long time. So I don't want anybody to think, well, oh, all business plans take a long time, which is why after my years of looking at businesses and really determining what's working for some and what's working for the other, I came up with it, what I call a simplified process to do a business plan. It doesn't have to take hours and hours and hours. Now, it can if you want to, depends on where your business is at. And so it is important for people to understand it doesn't have to be easy. And that's why I created the snapshot business plan 
so that individuals would not shy away from doing one of the most valuable things for their business by creating their plan and just even creating the plan for next year. And the ideal way is to, is to again, have that vision for five years, three years, and think of all the things that need to be done. But the most critical time is the now. Is what is it that you really want to see happen in your business in the next 12 months? Cool. Okay. Now I'm just going to say, I did catch you and you said it doesn't have to be easy, but you oh, meant no. it does. Doesn't have to be it complicated, does, yeah, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's early in the morning here. Maybe I need more coffee. Yeah. It, yeah. It doesn't have to be I difficult. Know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you for catching on those. Words. Okay. I just want to make sure that's what we're talking about. It is easy when you follow your snapshot business planning mode. It is. So, and here is something else. Yeah. It's like when individuals want to achieve anything. So you want to um, be a better golfer. As you know, I golf, you golf. Um, you've got to have your destination, but you also have to know that the first few times you go out, you're learning. And as if individuals start to take this, this snapshot business planning process, the first time they do it, it may go, oh, okay, okay, I've got to do this and that. And like you have proven. The more times that you do it every year, it's easier and easier. Like I have clients now that, again, I've taught the business planning process. And the first year, you put, you may have to put a little more muscle into it. But then every year, it gets easier and easier. And doing the mid-year review of your business plan is absolutely critical. That's what really keeps the momentum going. Okay, cool. Now, so you're talking about like the mid-year review and stuff. So it seems like, and you've mentioned your process. So when it comes to your snapshot business plan, what is involved and what are the elements that someone should be looking at to put together that snapshot business plan? Now, I know they could definitely go online and buy your book, which will help guide them because your book helps me every year. I pull it out. I look at it to put it together. But what would be some of those main elements for those listening on what they would want to include in their own plan? Ideally, there, not ideally, the truth is there are eight key areas in every business. I call them the eight facets because it's like eight little diamonds in your business. And if you take care of those diamonds, they're going to shine brightly and look good and you're going to get the results in your business. So those eight key facets, if individuals just look at those eight key facets and say, what's working in each one of these and what's not working and what would I really like to see happen? That's the simplest way for them to quickly create a business plan. Right. Okay. And so any chance you could share with us what those eight facets are? (laughs) Sure. Absolutely. So let's look at this. We know you are in business to fund your life. So the very first facet is your financials. Individuals and leaders who understand their financials are much further ahead in achieving their goals, but also they're better equipped to make good decisions. Because many times business owners make poor decisions financially, that is not really helping their business achieve the goals. So looking at the financial facet of your business is one of the very first thing. And as you said, Kathy, the Snapshot Business Planning Book is a great resource because you can go back and revisit because there are, as you know, many elements within the facet of financials that you have to look at as a business owner. We have limited time today, so I know that I can't probably drill down everything. But so leaders know your numbers and get help if you don't know your numbers. And it's, it's super, super, it's easy, as you know, to start to wrap your arms around. So the financials is a very first facet. The second one is being clear on what service are you providing or what products are you providing to your customers? Because what you're selling or what service you're providing is, of course, adding to your financials. So you've got to be clear in what you're, what you're selling. And if a company has got 15 different things, uh, types of services that they're offering, which service is generating them the most revenue and has the best, you know, net profit out of it? So that's the second one. The third one then, which is so important, and this is where a lot of companies spend a lot of money and time, but they don't get the value, is their marketing. Having a clear, specific marketing plan that, that you have helped I mean, as you have helped me in McLean International, but many others, if you don't have a clear design marketing plan that supports the services that leads to the financials, well, then you've got a little cog in your wheel. So you got your financials, you got the services you're offering, you've got to have the marketing in place that's going to bring the reward. 
The next thing is who's helping you? Who's your team? You may have A big team, you may have a small team. Now, remember, your team is not even just your employees. If you have employees in your company, it's also your subcontractors, your independent contractors. They are part of your team. What is it that they are doing to really support the company in generating the sales, keeping the customers happy? Um, So you have to be able as a leader to really understand your team. And as you know, Kathy, uh, as I'm certified in in the DISC personality assessment, that's just one tool that helps leaders understand the value uh, and understand the people who are on the team that that, that, then the team members can continue to add value back to the company. So that's, we call it team growth and development. Mm -hmm. Right. And I will say that, since I've been working with you, I have learned over time to get that kind of help in the hiring process where we do look at the DISC and the personality test because I have, you know, had people that have been great working with me, people that haven't been ideal. And it's interesting because I have learned over time that understanding more about them and how they work and and what their personality says about how they're going to work has really helped me make sure if I get the right people or not working with the team. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I think that, you know, is so critical too. Yeah, it's not a task cap. It's a personality assessment. Yeah. It assesses the right. individual strengths and their weaknesses or limitations. And see, leaders should know that first right. off. They should really be aware of where they shine. And then you want to have some good balance within your business. So anyhow, that's part of when you look at your, right. your team growth and development facet of your business. And then yep. the next one is, um, and this also kind of ties into Mark, but everything ties in together, of course, is what are your actual sales systems? You know, what is your verbiage when you're promoting your service? How do you describe your service? What is the system that you take your, your people through? And like, of course, your marketing plan is great because you focus a lot on lead generation and it all ties together. But see, Leaders have to be able to look and say, what is my specific sales system? Like, what's the funnel that's bringing everything down to generate revenue for the business? So looking at the sales systems is really important of how that ties into everything. And the next facet is customer retention. In business, Uh, we spend a lot of money. Yeah. So think of this. You've already spent a lot of money marketing everything else in your business. Yet, if you don't have a database and everything that wherein you are in good contact with your customers, you can lose them and you need to stay in front of them. So how do you retain those customers? How do you keep a relationship up? Because people get busy. They get on to the next thing and they may forget, oh, I remember Fred Flintstone. He was a great customer five years ago. What happened to him? Well, if you're not keeping in touch with them, i.e. ties back into your marketing, out of sight, out of mind. So customer retention is really, really critical. The next one is technology and equipment. Like what do you need in your business to help you be as efficient as possible? Are you hobbling along with old equipment or technology? And that can make a difference because it can actually be really, it can slow you down. And so that is technology. Look at that facet of your business. And then the other is your office. Individuals sometimes let their office be a dumping zone. And they are not as productive in their office as possible. Or they may need to change an office. They may need to, you know, all the different questions that happen under the office facet is important. And it's interesting. Sometimes you need to give your office like a a fresh look or whatever it might be or move or whatever. Right. And I think, too, on that one with the office, sometimes for people, it's knowing and understanding, can you work at home in a home office Or do you need to get into a space where there's like some people need that white noise in the background or other people? I think that can make a difference in how you perform and and how you are at work as well. Mm -hmm. It is. It's very important, Kathy, because there are more and more people that are working from home based offices, which I think is it can be really wonderful when you have the discipline to do it. So there may be something that for one leader or one person who owns their practice, they may need to have that separate space to go those to do a certain type of activities in their business or responsibilities in their business, but they may be able to do some activities from their home-based office. So again, as a leader, as a business owner, you have to know yourself so that you can best get get the best out of yourself. 
those are the eight facets. Those are the eight. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So, and we'll do a recap of that on the show notes, everybody. I'll put a list of that there, but I will tell you, you can get a lot more detail on each of those in the snapshot business planning book that Linda has, which you can get on Amazon and I'll put a link to that as well. Cause like I said, that's my Bible of business planning now, <laughs> because I was one of those people. I used to call myself a goal setting hater. <laughs> I did not like doing it. I did not at all. And I will tell you that once I started putting it in place, I saw big changes in my business and changes that even, you know, some of the changes that Linda helped me do was at a point when I was at a growth peak and it wasn't working for me. And so I went about actually letting some clients go and changing the shift of where of my services and what I wanted to offer to change how I was doing that because it affected how I was working, more importantly, how I was living. Mm -hmm. too. And Kathy, yeah. you know, one of the most important things about business owners is we want the best for our business. We want the best for our team. We want the best for our customers. But the decision stops with the business owner. You've got to schedule time in your calendar to work on your business rather than in your business. And that's what Michael Gerber clearly states. He wrote the whole book, The E-Myth. Why some businesses fail is because they don't schedule the time to work on their business. The, with the snapshot business planning process, not only is it easier, but you can take it down and work on, okay, I'm going to work on this one facet this week. I'm going to work on the right. next facet. Now that takes your business planning over an eight week period. However, if that works for you, do it. Or create your own schedule say, okay, I'm going to work on two facets this week. You can do it any way you want to do it. Just, I'm going to pull Nike. Just do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. All right. I have two questions from the facets that you brought up there. Okay. One of them is when you talked about customer retention. So I'm a big person. I always teach folks in my Thrive Marketing Academy that part of what you want to have set up with your email marketing and your you know, communication in that way is that you have your customers on a list where they're also getting emails or newsletters from you. In your opinion, because I want to ask the expert here, is that a good part of customer retention? I mean, I, I also tell them that you also want to make sure that you're doing follow up with them one on one and just checking in, doing things like that, that would nurture them along the way, whether they're a current or a past client. But do you feel that type of nurturing through the, the mass email, even in the way of a newsletter, is a good piece to do as part of customer retention? It is a critical piece. And here's something for your listeners to remember. Your database is the backbone of your business. So if they even only hear from you through mass email, at least they're hearing from you. You see, there's different levels of connection. First thing for everybody to do is to get your customer list clean. And get it set up on a consistent drip, however you want to explain it or however you want to. That is the easiest thing for people to do. And I know, Kathy, from following your direction and that I've sub subsequently passed on to many other clients who work with you, is people are hesitant to do that. But that's the most valuable thing that they can do. And it's interesting. Once you start to clean up your list and you're going through and you get them on that regular campaign of them hearing from you. The next level is even easier. And then the next level and then the next level. There are many levels, which I know you teach. It's in the book too, but there are so many different levels of how to stay connected with those past clients, those past customers that you've served. Yeah. But you're right. And it's easy. And see, people think it's difficult. They think it's going to take them too much time. It'll take them time. Everything in life takes time. Yeah. But you've got to commit right. to it. Okay. All right. You heard it here, folks. Even my business coach says email marketing is good and consistent email marketing. I always tell people most online sales happen from emails and they really do. But I do think it's a way, you know, we've had a lot of wins this year in the Thrive Marketing Academy and some of them are, I sent out a newsletter and an old client came back and started to work with me again. That's the kind of stuff that can happen when you pay attention to that. Sure, because yeah, exactly. this, the people who you have served, when you have your, at your core values in your business, and you know what are your core values in your business, which you should have five. It's in the, it's in the snapshot discipline book. And you honor those core values. And then you have all the peripheral stuff that supports that. The people that are coming back to you, and they will come back to you because they know you and they trust you. And we all want to do business with people we trust. 
And so therefore, you're kind of sitting on a gold mine. If you've got a, a database there, you got a list of clients and you're not connecting with them. It's like, oh, yes, you're sitting on your own little gold mine. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, Linda, thank you so much for this. I want one final question for you. What is one tip or piece of advice that you could share with everyone that can help them make that business planning easier to do, doable for us busy business owners? I know you gave us some ideas of, you know, book some time and block time to work on. Is there anything else that you could add as a best practice to make it easier to do? Well, Kath, I'm going to go back to the owners of this practice. You are leaders in your industry. Who do you really want to be? Do you want to be a leader that really gets results, not just for your business, but for your team? Because once you determine who you really want to be as a leader, it starts to put the wheels in motion. And all of a sudden, you'll start making better decisions in your business, such as the business plan. Like if you are a leader who says, oh, I don't really care. You know, I, I'm fine. Then fine. Just don't do business planning. But you may not reach your potential. So I'm going to put it right back to the individual, to the leader. Who are you? What are your strengths? What is it that you truly want for yourself and your business in the next 12 months? Because we know time slips by really fast. And so that's the best tip. What do you really, really want? And who are you? And then surround yourself with the right people who can support you. And it does not have to be expensive, which a lot of people think, and it does not have to take a lot of time. So just, I'm going to just say, make the decision. Okay. Awesome. So, and I will tell you folks, I'll put a link to her book because that book has really helped me make this process a lot easier. So that would also be my answer. Read the book. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that helps. All right. Well, Linda, thank you so much for being part of the podcast and taking some time to share some of your snapshot business planning strategies with my listeners. I really appreciate the advice you've offered and the expertise you've shared. And one of the things, folks, that Linda said she would make available to everybody is a checklist and summary of the snapshot business planning. And that'll be something that you could download off her website, mclaininternational.com. And I will put a link to that in the show notes where you can get that. And I really highly encourage you to grab a copy of it, at least to start working with that part. The book is a great companion that will pull you through all of this. Because I really have to say, once I took business planning a little more serious every year, I did make shifts. Now, I should have come prepared with numbers or percentages, but I know for me, the net profitability of my business changed once I started doing that kind of planning. I was, you know, I had a team at one point of 14 uh, subcontractors. We were servicing around 35 to 40 clients at any one time. It was a challenging business. It was, I had an agency and didn't even know it. But for me, when I made those decisions based on my planning that I did through Linda, what changed for me was how much time I put into everything and then the net profitability that I got back. So that for me made a huge shift and um, it affected both my business and my personal life. So this process works, but you've got to put the time into it to make it work for sure. When your vision becomes clear, it's like having dirty windows or a dirty windshield, like businesses go on and on and on. But the minute you just take a little bit of time, and it doesn't have to take a long time, clear off the windshield, all of a sudden you have a clearer vision of the direction yep. that you're going. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Linda, for taking the time to talk with me today and sharing your strategies with everybody. I really appreciate your expertise. Can you let folks know where they can connect with you online and find you online if they do want to learn a little more about you? Sure. They can go to mcleaninternational.com. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. If anybody has a question, they just want to zip to me. I don't even mind if they just email me at Linda at McLeanInternational.com. I'm very open and flexible to answer a quick question and support you to support them on their journey path. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I will put links to all of those different places, including where you can get a copy of Linda's book as well in the show notes. So you can find it there. And one thing I'll add in, because we didn't really talk about this, Linda, but she does a book study too, twice a year, a leadership type of focus book study. And they're awesome. So if you ever want to ask her about that, definitely reach out to her and email or ask her as well. 
So that is it for today. This is Kathy C. saying thanks for tuning in. And remember, to thrive in practice starts by taking the time every year to plan for what you want to achieve for your vision, as Linda's talking about here. And then you want to set in place the action steps that will get you there. I'll see you next time. You can find all of our show notes and resources mentioned at marketingyourprivatepractice.com. Be sure to connect with me on Instagram at pepperitmarketing and say hi. I'd love to hear any feedback you have and make sure to rate and review the podcast and hit subscribe on your favorite player so you don't miss any future episodes.